Welcome back to King's Film Room and today we're going to take a look at Keegan Murray's Summer League performance and break down everything we saw from him including both Vegas as well as the California Classic. Keegan walked away as the MVP of Summer League so we should have a lot of film to go over. So sit back and enjoy as we watch the tape. As always, we can start with the shooting ability that was evident right away. Keegan shot just above 41% from 3 on a total of 51 attempts across his 7 Summer League games, which is an incredibly impressive number on a decent sample size. Most people understood that shots should translate quite easily to the NBA level, but his shooting excellence likely silenced any doubters that still existed. A very large majority of Keegan's attempts from 3 came off the catch with no dribble and these are the exact same shots he should be getting on the next level. The spacing he provides at the 4 will be monumental for the Kings offense and he was aggressive in looking for a shot. He was never hesitant and always confidently let it fly on spot ups regardless of the situation. The release is about as smooth as it gets and has a perfect base with consistent mechanics all the way around. His release point is a bit lower and there is a slightly exaggerated forward pushing motion which you can see pretty good from this angle. And when I say he can pull it quickly, I mean really quick. Here he hardly even steps into the shot with his feet. You get the catch and the shot all in the same motion yet still generates enough power without a significant dip. Here Keegan steps into his shot, but again there isn't a real noticeable dip. He's already getting low to build power prior to the catch, so when he receives the ball he's able to go straight up into his motion with ease. We saw Keegan get his shots off in a multitude of ways. Beyond simple stationary catch and shoot looks in the half court, we saw Keegan effective in transition and especially off movement. Diving into this movement shooting, it was clear the Kings made an emphasis on running several different actions to get Keegan good opportunities. Most notably was this twirl action the team ran several times per game. This was the very first play of Summer League and one that I've already broken down a few times before. Keegan starts off setting a stagger for Jared Roden but you get screen to screener action when Keita then sets an exit screen for Keegan who flares out to the corner for 3 and drills the open look. This type of action is what we call a twirl to make it more simple. Slightly different setup this time, but the same intent. Keegan sets the pin down here for Key on Ellis, but instead of turning this into a dribble handoff for Ellis, which is what the setup looks like, he instead rescreens for Keegan who receives the ball on the handoff and again knocks down the jumper without hesitation. Moving away from these twirl sets, this is just a staggered set for Keegan. But when Keegan is coming off the first screen, he recognizes the defender's anticipation, so hits him with a quick stutter step juke move, which gives him the space he needs to get an open look off the catch. This type of movement shooting should be illegal for a guy his size. The next layer for Keegan is expanding upon his scoring ability with being able to shoot off the dribble, and we saw this plenty in the Summer League. These pull up middies out of the pick and roll are a large part of what drew the Chris Middleton comparisons, and for good reason. It's important for Keegan to be able to effectively attack closeouts off the dribble, and I like the flashes that we saw. Here he comes off the flare, pump fakes off the catch, gets his man in the air, and from there one dribble into a hop jumper. This time we get another ball fake that gets the defender jumping, then one dribble into a spin, and another pull up midi off the hop. He's adept at both hop jumpers as well as the 1-2 step. One area of self-creation we saw from Keegan, albeit very limited, are the step backs. Not exactly the quickest motions, but although the footing can be awkward at times, he's always on balance for the shot. Again, we didn't see too much of these, but I can appreciate the few attempts that we did see. The main way Keegan was able to create for himself though was attacking the basket. You won't see many advanced moves as Keegan is a straight line driver, but he makes long strides and attacks with purpose. But what was really impressive was the finishing ability and specifically being able to finish through contact. Keegan never had a problem taking bumps on his way to the basket, in fact he welcomed this contact. He would often look to lean in and insinuate it to draw fouls and had excellent strength to finish through it. Murray has always had great touch in the paint and combined with his strength that gives him the ability to be a lethal scorer from inside. Plus he can finish with either hand as he is actually a natural lefty. And here's some of the actions the Kings ran to utilize his driving ability. Here Keegan goes to screen then pops out at the top of the key. The defense is late switching so Keegan attacks instantly off the catch into the open space. He glides across the key and finishes with his right at a bit of an awkward angle. This is just a screen that Keegan curls off of and attacks the dropping big. Again he invites the contact, leaning in, creating the foul and hangs in the air for the and one. 
Another aspect of Keegan's off-ball game that should excite Kings fans is how active of a cutter that he is. We saw so many back doors from the corner where Keegan recognizes his man overplaying and creates easy baskets for himself. He's so good at setting his man up with subtle jabs and moves and is quick to make his breaks towards the rim. Of course the Kings have an elite passer out of the high post in Demonis Sabonis, so it's easy to imagine how this ability will go such a long way in the NBA. Now into some of the areas where Keegan has room to improve offensively, starting off with self-creation. Of course we saw plenty of flashes of this ability, but it's still super raw overall. Keegan lacks an explosive first step or advanced handle, which typically coincides with not being able to create off the dribble, and we definitely saw the struggles in Summer League. Quicker defenders have been able to cut him off in bad spots, which have led to either bad decisions or tough shots. The bad decisions have more to do with Keegan's lackluster playmaking as he has a ton of room to grow in this area. When he isn't getting to his spot on the drive, there are often times when he panics and rushes his next move, struggling to deal with traffic and not showing enough patience. And sometimes he's just too slow in making his reads altogether. That's not to say that he hasn't shown at least somewhat of a passing ability, because he has. Usually just kickouts on drives, as his gravity with the ball in Summer League was noticeable. Defenders were quick to offer help when one passed away, which created an opportunity for Keegan to make this read. And how about stuff like this? Rejects the screen and watch how Keegan manipulates the rotating defense. Keegan picks the ball up near the elbow and number 41 is in a good spot as he'll be the first man on the weak side X out. But Murray uses his eyes to deceive and gets 41 to shift up to the lifting Matt Coleman. And this opens up the pass to the far corner for a 3. As great of a read as this is though, it isn't the norm. Because there are plays like this where Keegan drives and pulls several defenders into the paint. You can see Jared Roden who's lifting on the weak side completely wide open and this isn't a super difficult passing window for Keegan if he's patient. But instead he tries to force his pass to Keita and that results in a turnover. A consistent problem with Keegan's off the dribble game is his tendency to drive into traffic and not having the awareness of knowing where helping defenders are. He doesn't keep his head up and really only looks to create for himself on his attacks. Murray isn't always going to have the best angles when driving, so it's important he's able to at least make the extra pass when the help comes, rather than setting himself up for failure. Moving over to defense, a lot of this is going to be reiterating my points in the last breakdown I did about Keegan. The perimeter defense continued to impress. Keegan has already seemed to make a ton of strides in his mobility laterally since his days at Iowa, and he's able to slide his feet extremely well. We still don't see a ton of slide and sprint transitions, but he's able to at least contain his man without having much problems so far. Here against a much smaller guard in McKinley Wright, you can see how active he is with his feet. He keeps his balance, changes directions, and funnels Wright off stride into a kickout. And look at his movement on this play. Instead of traditional slides or machine gun movement with his feet, he's actually just bouncing to his spots, utilizing these tiny hops, shifting his feet into each direction. But the hip speed we've seen out of Keegan has really blown me away. I've talked about this several times before, but I really did not anticipate Keegan already having this kind of ability so quickly. He's really had no problem flipping his hips and has been able to change directions to contain ball handlers with ease. Another point I continue to stress is this deceleration ability. Basically every NBA level guard can stop on a dime for these pull up jumpers, so for Keegan to be able to hold his own on these switches, he'll have to have somewhat of a start and stop game himself, and that's exactly what he's shown. It's this incredible balance and control of his body to go from sprinting towards the basket, then making hard plants, changing directions, and making forward lunges to get contests. And even on plays where Keegan isn't beating his man to the spot, he does a great job at utilizing his length to help alter shots near the basket. Murray will invite smaller guards to drive on him, knowing that he can still bother them even while riding their hip. He times his jumps well, and overall does a good job to avoid fouling. But Keegan still has his flaws on ball, most notably what I would call his defensive first step. Sometimes he's just a step slow in his reactions, and explosive players have been able to exploit this. Keegan struggles to cut off guards, and it's very possible to turn the corner on him. Sometimes he opens his hips up too wide, allowing easy angles on drives, and a lot of this is him expecting to be able to make up ground with his length. But as we know, this won't always work in the NBA. The screen navigation we saw was pretty solid. You don't have to worry about effort, Keegan is always fighting over screens and he looks to eliminate any advantages generated by picks. 
He's shown a pretty good ability to get skinny and fit through narrow spaces in between the screener and the ball handler. Combined with his length and deceleration, his recovery is always strong and in general I like his pick and roll defense. Another one of my favorite plays from Keegan where he recognizes this turns into a late switch. Watch how much ground he covers to recover back to the roller and the awareness he has to jump and make a break on this ball in the air. Just incredible defensive instincts. With all that being said about his point of attack defense, Keegan's off-ball defense was even more impressive. We saw so much from him in terms of weak side help, making the correct rotations and anticipating passing lanes. There's no doubt he projects to be a very impactful team defender. Keegan offers a decent bit of weak side rim protection. He's an incredibly smart helper, knows when to commit, and times his breaks perfectly. Murray isn't some insane shot blocker, but because of his awareness and recognition, he still offers a ton of value here. The focus is always there and he explodes on his routes to the ball. Even just the rotations Keegan makes shows us the defensive IQ he has. He's so smart at knowing when to help and being able to recover to stay in place after the initial help comes. You see so much activity, rather it be one pass away stuns or weak side X outs, I just love the amount of effort and detail he plays with. Just a quick example of his focus and reaction time. Keon Ellis is forced to offer help off his man in the weak side corner. This triggers an X out and watch how quickly Keegan reacts to this and closes out on the corner. Small detail but very important. That just about does it for this breakdown and thank you to everyone who stuck around. I have a bit more content planned coming up but there will no doubt be a dead period coming up soon with no basketball for the next few months. Anyways I appreciate all of you guys again and see you next time.